Hey y'all, it's Kimbu, and I'm back with another PPM explainer. And this time we're actually going to be talking about levels in projects and programs, uh, primarily primary and subsidiary levels. Even if you're not using the personal projects management method, it's important to understand the value of putting things into primary and subsidiary levels in projects or programs that you're working on. Because I, I don't care if you use personal projects management method. I hope that you do and hope it works for you. But what I'm trying to get at here is the underlying concepts of how this all works and how in the end it can save you much time, money, and spare you a lot of aggravation. Because the importance of levels is very high. <laughs> it it's actually underpins a lot of what goes on in bigger projects. Now, if you have a small project and I've used in other videos an example of doing laundry, well, you know, that's, you don't need, that's just, that's a primary level project of your housekeeping, probably. Um, you don't have to do, you don't have to build the washing machine before you do the laundry. Although if you do, my, my deepest sympathies, but you just need to do the laundry. It's a primary level uh, pro program, actually, and that's that. It's not very sophisticated. But if you're doing something where you're running a business and you're going to have uh, programs that go into that business, you're going to want to understand much more clearly what levels are and why we need them when we're doing project management, which remember is what I'm teaching you project management, how you manage the projects that are taking up all of your time and energy in your life. So the value of putting levels to something, as I was saying a little bit earlier, is to give you a framework. It is not about the steps of the projects or the tasks or whatever you're doing, and nor is it about the priority of them. When we use the word priority, it's used very loosely in, in uh, productivity circles. But specifically, priority means the importance to you. Now, you can say it's the priority is because, you know, it's the thing that has to be done before these other things are done. But that's kind of moving into the levels, the project management levels area. So there's a difference between hierarchy and personal importance or personal value in something. Uh, something can be very high value, but have um, high priority, but have very few, it, it's just, it's just a lot, like we were talking about laundry just a second ago. It's a primary level. Primary has nothing to do with it, how important it is to you. I mean, I hope laundry is important to you, but it, whether it is or it isn't, uh, that has no bearing on the level that that particular program has in the great course of you trying to do all your time management. So we're going to dig a little bit deeper. Here we go. So, uh, if you have a primary program, now remember, programs are repeating projects, essentially. They're things that don't have an end, laundry, uh, a podcast. Um, I'm doing a newsletter now for Task Mistress. That is a program because it goes out every week. There's lots of steps involved with me putting it together and then advertising it on social media. So it is definitely a program. You, in the example that I have here, uh, I have a primary program called Marketing. It might be under the guidepost of, you know, my online business, for instance. And so here's a primary program. It is directly as one of the one of the temples in that guidepost. It's a primary program. It's right underneath that. And everything that I do with that falls under marketing as a program itself, a primary level program. It can have, now here's where the tricky part comes in. A lot of people get confused about this. It can have subsidiary level items. This doesn't mean that they aren't important. In fact, it might be that podcast is a primary marketing tool for you, but you'll note it's still a subsidiary program itself of the program marketing. That's because it's in the marketing bucket, right? You can have a lot of other things too. Uh, Facebook ads, I'm, I'm reading my own examples here, um, a newsletter, if you could have both, you know, a lot of different things. All of these things would be subsidiary levels. Nothing on this list 
indicates priority, how important it is to you. Is the podcast more important than the newsletter? Are the Facebook ads more important than everything else? Only you can be the judge of that. You are the expert here. You are the person who's running your own business. No one else can, well, I mean, if you hire a consultant, sure, they can tell you a lot. But I'm saying in the sense of me being a time management person, I can't tell you what the priority is for your business. But anybody who has any ounce of project management experience can come in and tell you what your subsidiary programs and projects are under more marketing or whether something is a subsidiary project. I have people who do things like podcasts and newsletters and they tend to try to make them primary. That's okay. There's no problem with that if that's what fits your mental mind of things. But remember a, a primary level program or project sits right under the guideposts. It's right under the enterprise that you're doing. And so you put it in a certain bucket and if you have marketing in one bucket and your podcast in another bucket, well then things start getting murky because what's the point of the podcast? It's say, is it part of your marketing? Is it not part of your marketing? So you can see where something like that being a subsidiary program helps you look at the full picture of what you're trying to do with your marketing. It could be that that podcast takes up a lot of your time. That podcast could be, you know, 75% of your marketing where everything else has to kind of fight for the remaining 25%. That's fine. Again, this isn't about priorities. It's about understanding the framework and the levels of the program or project that you're working in. If your uh, program, your primary program is marketing, then you want everything that pertains to marketing under it so that you know what's going on, which is always my biggest, biggest thing to stress in these videos is make sure that you have a way to understand what is going on. That is the, well, probably the second, but it is one of the top reasons people get confounded and confused when they're doing time management or trying to use a, a task management app. They have so many tasks. They have like, look at those four things right there. That's not even including every actually running the business. That's just the marketing end of it. And they get weighed down by making social media posts on Facebook and, and trying to, you know, create new issues for the podcast and do all of these things. And they just lose track of this is just, these are just subsidiary programs and projects of the primary program marketing. And it's very important because once you step back and you look at that, well then, 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 and only then can you start assigning some priorities to what you need to be doing. It may be when you look at this kind of list and you're like, no, the podcast, I've got a lot of visitors. I'm getting a lot of draw from that. I'm, you know, people are signing up for my, to my email list by visiting my podcast page, my newsletter. I'm, I'm not getting a lot of, you know, uh, interaction with, I'm not getting, my click throughs aren't great. My open rates aren't good. Um, I'll just reduce the newsletter to maybe once a month or something like that. You can make these judgment values because you, you see they're all in the same bucket and you can understand the amount of time that they're taking up in relation to each other and in relation to the other primary programs that you have going on. So let's look at an actual project as opposed to a program online course creation. Uh, technically this could be a program because if you have an online business and I can attest to this because I do, uh, that has offers online courses, you are continually in a process of creating online courses that does not stop. You're creating and you're creating, you finish one course and you start the other course in a way that's a program. So, you know, I, I might actually, you know, if I were doing this, I'd probably, if this were my business, I should say, instead of just an example on a slide, um, I would probably have online course creation as a program and then set it up that way. But in this particular case, we're going to just look at uh, online course creation as a project standing on its own as a primary project. Maybe you might actually be somebody who only wants to create one course in your business and that's your keystone course and everything else is just gonna be books and projects and stuff off of that. Could be, I don't know, it's possible. So 
there's a lot of steps involved with that. I have a toolkit that helps walk you through it. If you want to take a look at that, um, I might be redoing it a little bit to include more worksheets on it because I think there needs to be more worksheets. <laughs> I do. I, I'm talky. I don't know if you know that. Um, but I think I need more worksheets for people to understand the material. But anyway, uh, moving right along, there's a lot of steps to creating an online course. Like all the, all the big online course platforms, people is like, sign up today, have your course live by to, by the weekend, you know? And it's like, uh, unless your course is, unless you are, unless you've been a teacher for a while and you're used to doing things on video, nah, no, it's not going to happen that way. It's a lot of steps. It's a lot of steps. But here's the other thing. There's a lot of steps. One of the big steps is class video creation. And in this particular example, let's pretend we're having our one single keystone online course, but it's a big one. You've got like 20 classes and every class has three modules right? And you've got quizzes and you've got, you know, tracking things to tell people that it's big. And so you're going to be creating, so let's just say, you know, it's 20 classes with three modules, like 60 videos? Really? Like you're going to do that on the weekend. You are not going to do that on the weekend. So what you need to do is just like a major Hollywood studio or Bollywood studio or any studio anywhere, um, you need to Create a timeline and a plan for creating these videos. Because you can't do them all in one day. Even if you had all the material art and all the scripts and all, you know, if you were fi that, fine, but you can't record them all in one day. That's not how anything works. So what you would need to do, my advice, would be to create a subsidiary program called Class Video Creation. List out the steps that you need to do for each class, for each module's video. So remember each class is three module. We're talking a major course here. And then create sub tasks of all the steps you have to take. So you can see where this site's getting a little confusing because you have the subsidiary program of uh, class creation. You're gonna have to have um, possibly even a sub sub program. But what I would suggest, honestly, is just create a tracking sheet and have a tracking sheet um, on Notion or on Google Sheets or Excel, wherever you like to keep your spreadsheets and just list out all the episodes, all the modules that you would have to do. And then as part of the listing out of the steps, one of the steps would be, you know, fill out, keep up to date the tracking sheet. As you go through each video, you're going to go through the steps listed on that subsidiary program worksheet of what you have to do, which would be things like outline it, write the script, um, set up the teleprompter with the script, with the edited script, because remember you don't just write a script, you write a script and then you practice it and you practice it and you practice it and you edit it and then you put it into a teleprompter, whatever teleprompter you're using, and then you have to actually film the video, which is probably going to take several takes. Even this video took me like two takes because I don't know, the air conditioner kind of dog barked, whatever. But you're going to have to do that and then you're going to have to edit it or outsource it to be edited. And then finally, you're going to have to, uh, you know, integrate it into the class module that it belongs to. There's a lot of steps there, friend. There's a lot of steps. And you can um, bulk things together. I mean, that's a really popular way of doing things where you like script things out. You do all this, you do 10 scripts on one day and then another day you record four or five videos all at once, you know, batching it so that it's all done together, but you're still not going to do it all in one day. You need some way to track it. And so that's why you would have a subsidiary program worksheet specifically for creating the videos for the courses. Now, if you go someone step back up on the project worksheet for online course creation, you would have a step that says create class video. And that would be, then you have one line would actually represent everything that's on the subsidiary course cre uh, class creation video creation. I'm getting all my creations and classes mixed up here. Um, but the, uh, 
class video creation subsidiary program worksheet. So it's all connected, but it's all written out and it's all very easy to find and it's all collected in a way that you can look at it and know exactly what you need to do. And this is part of where I get into the idea, which I've talked about in other videos, of using the personal projects management method with other tools like an online calendar or a spreadsheet program uh, because you can't have everything in one place. That's a lie. You can, you absolutely can. You can put everything in one place. If you've got something like Asana, the learning curve is pretty steep. And quite frankly, my advice to solopreneurs and freelancers and creativepreneurs is to use the tools you're already comfortable with. Running a business is busy enough. You don't need more fills to take up your time. You don't need a new learning curve. If what you're doing is working, then that's fine. So as you're coming into a big project, whether it's a free like it's project that you're doing for somebody else, if you're starting an online uh, courses business, um, if you're going into production or manufacturing, um, you're creating the perfect backpack and you've got a lot of things. You need to really sit down, break things out and figure out what is primary and what is subsidiary. And remember these can be nested going back to, you know, the building of the house, you've got the house project and you've got the pouring the foundation project. And then the pouring the foundation project, which is a subsidiary project has its own subsidiary projects. And you can go down that rabbit hole pretty steep. If that helps you figure out what you're doing, that's great. There's no limit on that. But at the very least, try to get one or two levels down so that you know exactly what need you need to do in a way that's easy to identify. I guess, you know, where the choke points are, you know, where if, if you've got something that really needs, for instance, with manufacturing being the example, if you've got something that really needs to be done by a hard deadline, then you need to put that on the calendar and you need to work backwards and you need to figure out, well, design and, you know, testing materials and creating prototypes and then finding the manufacturer you want to use. These are all things. And some of them might just sit happy as a line item there on the pro primary project worksheet, but some of them are going to be subsidiary projects where you're going to have to be digging down into a whole host of steps and tasks that are associated with that subsidiary project to get you through to the next line item on the primary project worksheet. Again, I know this can be a little confusing when talked about in the abstract. If you look at some of my, uh, PPM worksheets, it makes it, I hope, a little bit clearer. I'm going to maybe try to do a, a flow chart for people at some point. But at this point, this is the best I can do. I'm sure I'm going to come back to this again because this is one of the most uh, popular questions I get along with how do you di identify a guidepost is, well, you know, primary and subsidiary, what is what, what is the other and how to tell the difference. I hope this video has cleared that up for you a little bit. Of course, if you have examples or you have a question, you can always send them to me at kimbu at task-mistress.com. Uh, you can see the little website link right there on the card. Love to hear from you. And if, especially if you have any questions about levels and how they are used in project management, happy to answer any of those questions. We'll be talking about priorities in a different video. But if you have questions about priorities, you can send those too. So thanks y'all and I will talk with you again soon.